Alright, so this is going to be another movie review. <laughs> this one's called Hello, Mr. Moto. 1937. I'm getting it. Five out of five stars. I love this flick. There's an interesting... Um, documentary on the uh, on the producers it's sort of a uh, rags to riches story how he uh, graduated from high school became a bookkeeper and then uh, he worked for Mr. Mr. Fox on 20th Century Fox and um, and after the depression he sort of took over the uh, B lot which is uh, where the whole B movie concept came from with the Charlie Chans and the Mr. Motos on the the Fox B lot, uh, a lot of uh, great ideas came from this guy. Very influential on the uh, comic book movies of today, which is not necessarily a good thing. Uh, this one is super corny, super campy. For instance, uh, Peter Lorre plays Mr. Moto. Keeps saying. Uh, says at one point sayonara which means in Japanese I'll never see you again for as long as I live <laughs> so uh, Peter Lorre not a very believable Japanese dude <laughs> he keeps saying aso like aso desu ka <laughs> and uh, John Carradine plays the thieving uh, art dealer. <laughs> Another John Carradine flick. Uh, this is the second in the series of eight, I believe. Uh, Mr. Moto. Hello, Mr. Motos. I'd like to see all the other uh, Mr. Moto. Kind of like um, Charlie Chan. You know, instead of the Chinese detective, you got the uh, the Japanese detective in China. Um, so it starts out with Mr. Moto in the Gobi Desert, somewhere around uh, Mongolia, I guess. Somewhere in China. Northern China, maybe, and uh, some dude is trying to steal his uh, his uh, Chinese scroll, his priceless ancient Chinese scroll, because it holds the key to where Genghis Khan is buried. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Moto. It's the second in the series of eight films starring Peter Lorre as Mr. Moto, based on the novel of the same name by the detective's creator, John P. Marquand. So, um, so Mr. Moto, who's very small, Peter Lorre, is able to... Uh, manhandle these uh, much bigger guys <laughs> with surprising uh, strength and uh, he goes to a dinner party where uh, the great Philip Ahn 
is playing Chinese Prince Chung, uh, sitting next to his white mother. <laughs> Notice how there are very few actual Asian actors in this one, other than stand-ins for like the Chinese crowd. <laughs> only, only Philip on. He does an incredible scene when his white mother is getting tortured. He says, don't, stop, no, please, no, stop, don't, no. <laughs> and, uh, so some greedy uh, art dealer dude wants to... Uh, pay a hefty price for the six scrolls. The seventh one is missing. But apparently Mr. Moto has it at various times. Very confusing. But when you lay out the scrolls, all seven of them together, it shows you how to uh, how to get to uh, Genghis Khan's tomb where all this treasure is buried in the desert. Okay, so so Mr. Moto, uh, the, the greedy art dealer dude who, who says he wants to uh, give it to a friend, the six scrolls with the one missing, um, he pulls a gun on Philip on and he says, I want those scrolls. And then... Uh, Mr. Moto sneaks in, uh, kills the guy in self-defense on behalf of uh, Philip Ahn, and uh, it makes it look like a suicide by sticking a knife in his chest and putting his hand uh, uh, around the knife. And all this is witnessed by, uh, by this dude's... Uh, Wife, I guess. Um, then uh, Philip on allows uh, Mr. Moto to see the scrolls, but his white mother disappears. Uh, then John Carradine appears, the uh, unscrupulous art dealer in antiquities. <laughs> Uh, he tries to sell her a, a, a fake scroll that's like a month old. <laughs> and uh, he wants like 2000 in gold or something. The price is too high. So the next day, uh, Mr. Moto gets uh, John Carradine to confess that he stole the authentic scroll, but uh, then John Carradine is, is shot before he can get any more information. He's uh, drive-by shooting through the window. <laughs> and then uh, Mr. Moto returns to his apartment, he finds it ransacked. He suspects that a, a thief might be present, so he uh, he leaves a, a gun with blanks in it lying around. Then uh, the bad guy holds him up again, gun uh, point, forces uh, Mr. Moto to give him the scroll, or is it the fake scroll? <laughs> is it the the John Carradine one month old scroll um, so Mr. Moto gets shot several times with the, his gun that has blanks in it uh, and then Mr. Moto follows uh, follows the dude to uh, to some house where the uh, where the scroll is supposed to, supposedly in a in a safe, but I think it's a, it's the fake one. 
that's in the, in the safe. Uh, so, uh, Moto tries to follow them, but he's knocked out by the uh, butler. <laughs> and then the gal is uh, taken hostage. <laughs> then, uh, then the bad guy starts to uh, torture Philip Ahn's white mother. <laughs> and uh, he reveals the location of the six scrolls. So thinking that they have the, the uh, seven scrolls to get it to Genghis Khan's treasure, they, um, they go to a junk and um, they think uh, Mr. Moto drowned in, in, the, uh, in the lake there, but uh, he comes back, pulls himself up, goes on the boat and uh, tries to pull a, uh, a jealousy love triangle ploy on uh, both the women on the boat. <laughs> no, ni not 1937. No Asian nudes in this one. Sorry it took so long. I finished the movie right when I had to drive my son back. And I had to go grocery shopping. Uh, Rainbow uh, Co-op was closed, so I, did, I couldn't get my uh, dark chocolate with Himal Himalayan pink salt or my uh, crunchy, thick tortilla, tortilla chips for Saturday. I'm going to be working a lot this weekend, although I, uh, I will be... Uh, I don't have to wake up until like 12 noon. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this this is 1937. It's pretty uh, it's pretty tame. I wish there were some uh, naked uh, Asian women in this. But uh, if you want that, you gotta look for the uh, Japanese pink films of the 70s. I think. <laughs> Yeah, I'll probably work uh, like 4 to 11 at night tomorrow. So I'll have to be there till like 2 p.m. I think I can uh, wake up early and check out that uh, uh, Richard Harrison flick, the, uh, the James Bond ripoff guy who was in uh, Diamond Ninja Force. He's uh, playing James Bond <laughs> in uh, <laughs> Secret Agent Fireball, which is a ripoff on Thunderball from the previous year. <laughs> I guess I'll watch that. Uh, Netflix pretended like they didn't receive my DVD today. I guess because of the uh, New Year's holiday. Happy New Year's, by the way. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, you know who I'm talking about—the Godfrey Ho guy with the Garfield phone, <laughs> Richard Harrison. Yep, that's the guy. He plays the James Bond dude. Yeah, it's already New Year's Day. It's New Year's Eve here. My my freaking uh, grocery store was closed. The lazy hours, uh, communist uh, gay people don't want to work on New Year's Eve. <laughs> A man called Horse. Oh, nineteen seventy. 
I'll have to look that one up. Richard Harris. No, that's a different guy. I'm talking about Richard Harrison. <laughs> I'm talking about the, uh, the Garfield phone, the Diamond Ninja Force. <laughs> Richard Harrison. European B movie dude from the 60s and 70s branching out to exploitation films shot all over the world in the early 70s uh, Godfrey Ho stuff in Hong Kong during the 80s like uh, Diamond Ninja Force I'll check out A Man Called Horse though I'll see if it's on Netflix or uh, or YouTube anyways Decent black uh, B, B movie from the 30s. Fox B lot. Who's the producer on? Uh, I can't think of the guy's name. Um, thank you, Mr. Moto. <coughs> looking up his name fascinating story about how like a half million after the depression and uh, got a promotion after a uh, little bonus feature on this disc thank you Mr. Moto so, bet you never heard of him huh <laughs> Yeah, he's very influential on the on the comic book movies of uh, you know nineteen ninety five and afterward. According to the uh, bonus features with his B lot movies, uh, Charlie Chan and Mister Moto. So uh, you know the black and white stuff from the thirties. So pretty cool. I'll check out a man called Horse. I'll see if I can find it. Thanks for the tip. And uh, oh, I saw your comments on the on the mummy's ghost. I was thinking, yeah, Lon Chaney should have picked up that that little hooch going. Arr, 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 arr. <laughs> he should have picked it up and thrown it around like a rag doll. That's what he was doing with everybody else besides the dog. It was kind of funny. <laughs> Ironic that way. <laughs> oh, what else? Uh, yeah, what else? What else can I say about the mummy's ghost? <laughs> it was. Uh, oh, in the mummy's ghost, uh, <laughs> he was. Uh, he was kind of swinging his arm, his left arm, but in the mummy's curse, he, he had his uh, he had his hand like this across his chest. <laughs> I guess he didn't want to swing it anymore. He got tired of swinging it around, <laughs> so he just went like this. <laughs> so, what do we got in the comments here? Uh, what else? <laughs> oh, Attack of the Giant Leeches. Didn't I just uh, review that? I said it was uh, it should have been called Attack of the Politicians or something. <laughs> Isn't that an AIP? Uh, yeah, I think it's AIP, right? I reviewed that. I thought I saw it on... Uh, MST3K. Maybe maybe it was a different one. Oh yeah, it's AIP. It was in a double bill with a bucket of blood. That was one that I reviewed. I remember that. Honey fried dog. <laughs> cool. Well, um. 
I'll check out a man called Horse, another Western. Politicians attack. <laughs> yeah. Are they giant leeches or are they politicians? Uh, it's hard to tell the difference. <laughs> anyways, uh, cool. Nice chatting with you, Mr. Adrian. Finally got a hold of you. Happy New Year's. And uh, I posted the link to the uh, both the movie and the trailer in the skipper inbox, so check it out. Laters.